Let us all that we can to build a better future. But without further ado, Lainey, you got stories for people. What oh, do is I have stories on? for the people? Okay, I'm hopping bad. I want to ask you to all to stay with me because I know that sometimes people get angry if we seem to be talking about Chicago because we are in Chicago. And while I'm using Chicago as an example for this story, uh, because it's very obvious, in fact, this is a national story. Now, you've heard me talk about the problems with local media that local newsrooms are being and are being gutted across the country. That you have papers, esteemed papers, that are being bought up by hedge funds. They're not we're not even talking corporate media at this point. We're talking hedge funds that are trying to bring in fast profits to their shareholders. Uh, I've been talking last week. I pointed out that there is a study from Medill uh, School of Journalism noting that about one fifth of this country is a news desert or at risk of becoming a news desert. This is a country of freedom of the press, freedom of speech, something that our founding fathers really did understand was kind of important Mm -hmm. to having a functioning republic. And we are seeing that dream dying all over the place. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Now, this is a small example. It may seem petty. It may be very tiny, but I'm going to tell you something. There's a little bit in the Bible that talks about Uh, how when people are faithful in small things, they are faithful in larger things. And we know, of course, that when people aren't faithful in the smaller things, oftentimes they're going to screw up on a larger level. So let's have an example here. Now, Chicago has a a television station called WGN. And WGN has been around, I want to say since the 40s. It is a, uh, has long been, was known as our independent network. It was not Back in the day, and for you youngsters out there, this is before cable or even when before Fox became a thing, there were three major na- networks. There was ABC, CBS, NBC. And in Chicago, we had our own network, an independent uh, full-service station with its own news department, uh, WGN. They also have an affiliated radio station. At one point, they were owned by Chicago Tribune, world's greatest newspaper. But in any case, it's, to this day, the tagline for the, for the station is Chicago's very own. This is supposed to be Chicago's community station. This is important to keep in mind because, in fact, WGM was taken over by a company called, there's a company called Nexstar that took it over. And Nexstar is a national company that claims that they are supporting local journalism. But, in fact, it's a national company that has hundreds of stations in its portfolios in, in hundreds of communities across the country. All right. So Next Star is kind of sort of operating WGN's Chicago's very own website. And lo and behold, one evening, I, I of course, I, I favorited the page or whatever, fanned the page on Facebook so I can get information in my feed. And sure enough, a couple nights ago, I'm scrolling through and there's this thing from WGN talking about the best places to get barbecue in the city of Chicago. City of Chicago, a food city considered to be, on the international level, some of the highest rated chefs in the world have come to work here. We're also known for the breadth of our cuisine, um, different styles of cuisine, different price points, but we're known for that. It's a very important part of our city's culture. So I'm looking over this and I'm looking at all the comments and people are outraged. And they're saying, you decided to put up a list of Chicago barbecue restaurants that doesn't include anybody on the South Side? Mm. No Lems? No Honey One Barbecue? How are you going to not? No South Side restaurants. Now, it gets even weirder. Okay. They said, you got a couple of restaurants on there twice. John Kemper said they said Wendy's. (laughs) And they, and they, and then somebody, somebody popped in there and said, you got places in there that have been closed for years. Okay, so Chicago's very own, and it's a very strange little list because uh, it's got, let me see here, it's not like the top 10, it's like 28, it's like they just grabbed this random number of 28. So I'm looking over this list, Why not do 30? and then I'm noticing, for example, at the beginning of the article, they make a statement, which is true. Cooking meat low and slow over an indirect heat source. The only real qualifications for barbecue is a truly American tradition. Fair enough, except they've got Korean barbecue restaurants on this thing. Which is, by the way, not the way, it's it's a very different way of grilling the meat. You grill it over coals or fire or gas. It's a relatively quick process. 
in Korean barbecue restaurants there. Now, I happen to love Korean barbecue. Yeah. It's awesome. Nothing against no, Korean barbecue. No, not at all. But it's not nothing American against- low and slow. They've also got the Weber Grill on here. Weber Grill is primarily known as a steak house. Yeah, they do have ribs and barbecued chicken, but they're cooked on grills. It's not really a barbecue restaurant. So something is very wrong with this article. So (laughs) I start looking into this and I realize, okay, who wrote this nonsense? It's by Stacker, Nexstar Media Wire. Okay, Nexstar, the parent company claiming to be supporters of local journalism that are actually a national organization that manages all this stuff for the local stations. Um, Essentially, they contracted with a company called Stacker. Stacker claims to be this original innovation in journalism. What they do is they scrape other websites, pull up facts, repackage everything into an article, and you can find it up on their website, and they sell it to news services who need content. Not journalism, content for their website. All right? And where did Stacker get this information? Off of TripAdvisor, which is another third-party, user-generated content website. All right, there's no journalism here. And moreover, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think anybody at WGN in the newsroom over here checked this out before it showed up on Chicago's very own news station's website. And if you think this is just happening in Chicago, you're wrong. And it's it's shocking to me that it is happening in Chicago where you'd think we would have the money to have at least an intern or somebody who knows something about food or Chicago or reality checking out stuff before it goes up on the website. Like the fact that some of these restaurants have been closed for a couple, for several years. So this is, here's the thing. Okay. Again, this is, this is about barbecue restaurants. It's about food. We do have food journalists in this city. Chicago Tribune actually has a ridiculously overqualified and absolutely wonderful uh, food critic, uh, Louisa Chu. We know that this sort of thing is important. It's local news. It's what supports our community. In this case, WGN can't even be bothered to bring in its own food reporters to report on our own city. And instead, they are repurchasing content that has been scraped from a website for tourists without even bothering to check anything. Oh, and one more thing. If you look at the very end of the first paragraph, or the second paragraph in this article, it says some restaurants on the list may have recently closed. That actually were putting up something that they knew could possibly be inaccurate. And sure enough, when I went over and I've got them in the show notes, you can go down and check out the show notes and do subscribe to my show notes. That way you'll get them every day or every, every Thursday. Uh, you will know Web I Archive. This actually shows when this post was put up, exactly in the original post. And it says, some restaurants on the list may have recently closed. They're not even trying. They're putting up information that they know is probably incorrect. So uh, AG says this is good investigative journalism. And the thing is, okay, let me explain why this story is important. Yeah, we're talking about barbecue, but there's a bigger picture. I said in the show that corporate media, big tech and the two-party system think you're dumb, okay? Now, this is what they think about you. And they're going to be treating you, the American people, the viewer, the listener, the voter, like you're an idiot. Now, the thing is, this isn't right. This is how the system views us, that no one would look into this. And this is just a local story here in Chicago. A lot of these restaurants, to Lenny's, Lenny's point that she brought up, have been closed. Some of these restaurants aren't even American-style barbecue. Whoever is in charge at WGN clearly isn't doing her job. Again, shout out to Fair and Balance, who is also joining our chat here as well. Uh, she's also bringing up uh, WGN and its, and its failings. But this is, this is something that you have seen before. This is something you have seen this before, this click, copy, and paste. Now, what am I talking about? Well, let's go back down memory lane in 2016. When Jimmy Dore used to be part of TYT, hold on, hear me out, everyone, calm down, let me explain. Jimmy Dore did a report for TYT during the 2016 primary, and he was noticing, and they caught it on film, where journalists from all the media outlets and local outlets were all copying each other's notes and repeating what they were saying for the exact same day. There was no real originality there 
Everyone was click copying, pasting their notes, copying each other's notes. And this is the environment that corporate media has created. An environment of laziness, an environment of no accountability, no real investigative journalistic ethics, or anything else of that nature. It's still going on. And again, shout out to Matt Orfla, who put together this wonderful video uh, compilation where you have all these media outlets saying the same thing, Russian disinformation, or this is something that we're reporting on. And you notice all these reporters are saying the same thing. This is how they have undermined media and journalism here in America. These corporations are doing that. This is why we need independent media. This is why we need to break apart the monopolies that control our journalists, uh, j journalist outlets here in America. We have to build something better because what we are getting right now is pure ignorance. And this is a barbecue story. But this is just scratching the surface. They've done worse. And it's not getting better. And Maybe. I'm going to say this as well. Look, and I know the reason why News Next Star does this. I know why they're scraping up stuff from Stacker and why Stacker is scraping this stuff up because... They need to have that 24-7 news cycle. They need to have stuff circling through social media. They need all that content. As a journalistic organization, they ought to be making sure that the, the content is accurate. But newspapers have been syndicating stories for years. That, that's no problem at all. But you want to make sure that it's accurate. And, and nobody, nobody is at the wheel here. And in fact, if I, was a li if I was very, very cynical, and I guess maybe I am, yeah? I might even say that they have no problem with throwing inaccurate stuff up because they know it's going to generate comments. More comments hits the social media algorithms, people join in, more hits, more views, more advertising revenue. At this point, that is where my mind is going with this. And again, this is not about barbecue. It's not about Chicago. This is how local journalism has become dependent on corporate or national corporate overlords who are not doing anything to help ensure that local journal and local local no, newsroom websites are providing accurate information to those communities. Journalism isn't just about politics, it's about arts, it's about culture, it's about local businesses, it's about dozens of different things, but integrity must prevail at every level. And go ahead, check those show notes out. I put the receipts in there, you can see what they did. That article went up at 4 p.m. And it even said right then at that time, some of this information may be wrong. I also want to give this note to uh, Farron, who said this here in the live stream chat. Yep. And when the one reporter got it wrong, the press pool, none of the 35 media outlets who got it wrong because of the because of that reporter never retracted the story nor apologized. That's right. And Farron knows. By the way, Farron has a fantastic morning show. Uh, you guys got to check out her channel. You can go on over to Twitter. Uh, Farron, let people know in the, in the chat how, how to find you You're, uh, over on Locals. Uh, she does a fantastic morning show. It's a, it's a delight to see her. Um, and uh, she's just fantastic. Uh, I also want to bring this up here, too. Farron brings this up. Uh, it's funny. The Chicago barbecue story will show up on every Next Star Station's website, too, just to full uh, fill content. That's where we're at. That's where we're at with journalism. Yeah. Uh, this is why I ask everyone to support independent media. Double check and triple check if you're still subscribed to us here at Hardlands Media. Folks, I can't predict the future of what's going to happen on YouTube or every or any anywhere else with independent media, but um, just it's, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse until people start demanding more. And this is gross and disgusting. And um, I wonder if anyone's going to be held accountable. The answer is no. That well, that's what I'm doing here. Yeah. No, that's what I'm doing. We're, we're holding them accountable. There we go. That's right. We are. We are. That's we are. what we did here. That's, that's right. why I went and I got the screen. That's why I got the screenshot from, from, from archive. They're not archive. Right. This is the kind of BS. When they put out stuff and they were even saying we think we're wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll call them out. So there we go. Because Hard Lens Media is Chicago's original very own.